Hi out there in Freeman land, uh, another short uh, video on banking and how we're going to uh, demystify what the banks actually do. So I've called this uh, banking demystification, demystified and I hope it's of uh, help to you. So first of all, once again, uh, what I like to do is go through all the different um, um, sources that I get my information from or where I research and I show them online here in the presentation where I'm getting the um, where I'm getting this information from. So the first source that we're going to be looking at is Bovier's Online Law Dictionary, and uh, what a bank is. Okay, so under Bovier's, it's a place for the deposit of money. Uh, number two, it's an institution generally incorporate, incorporated, authorized to receive deposits of money, to lend money and to issue promissory notes, usually known by the name of banknotes. Banks are said to be of three kinds of deposit, discount and circulation, but they generally perform all three of these uh, operations. So now let's just look a bit further at what a deposit is. Deposit is a contract. Once again, we're seeing um, a contract. Everything comes in, uh, in as a contract. So uh, the, uh, the stuff that they're sending us, like bills and so on, they are also contracts. Now, but it says here, usually defined to be a naked bailment of goods to be kept for the bailor. Now, just a quick word on what bailment is. Um, you need to go to Bovier's and look at that, but I'll just give you a quick uh, thing, what it, uh, what it means. It's from the French, which means to deliver. And it means the act of delivering goods or personal property to another in trust. Okay, so bailment is delivering goods from or the personal property to another person in trust. In bailment, the goods are delivered on trust, usually on a contract, express or implied. So that gives you an idea what bailment is. And uh, that word will come up a lot, especially if you go to court, because you get bailed. So it's uh, good to learn all these other words. Okay, for the bailer, without reward and to be returned when he shall require it. Um, Pothia defines it to be a contract by which one of the contracting parties gives a thing to another to keep, who is to do so gratuitously and obliges himself to return it when he shall be requested. There is another class of deposits noticed by Pothier and called by him irregular deposits. This arises when a party having a sum of money which he does not think safe in his own hands confides it to another who is to return him not the same money but a like sum when he shall demand it. The usual deposit made by a person dealing with a bank is of this nature. The depositor in such case becomes merely a creditor of the depository for the money or other thing which he binds himself to return. Now you need to read that carefully because there's a lot in that. So now we'll look at the other main one on here which is circulation and a circulating medium. By this term it's understood whatever is used in making payments as money, banknotes or paper which passes from hand to hand in payment of goods or debts. Now debts is another um, thing that um, needs to be looked at. A debt is normally a certain sum due from one person to another by a record. Um, it, that which is owed. Debt is that which is owed. All right. Now from our uh, own New Zealand um, law dictionary, um, Butterworth's, bank is a body corporate authorized to carry on the business of banking in New Zealand. Okay, number two, it's a shelf, bench, stall, or money changes table. And three, land confining water, so the river banks. But um, yeah, there's nothing really in any of those that has given us any great clue. So we're going to have to look a little bit further. And uh, so we'll go to the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Act 1989 and see if we can glean any more information here. So we go to the interpretation section, section one, uh, section two, and one, it says, in this act, unless the context otherwise require, financial institution means any person, in any person, including a body of persons, whether incorporated or not, who carries on the business of borrowing and lending money. Okay, 
That's all a financial institution does is carry on the business of borrowing and lending money or providing um, financial services. But that's not so, so important. The most important part we're looking for there is who carries on the business of borrowing or lending money. A registered bank, this is from the same uh, interpretation in the Reserve Bank of New Zealand DAC, a registered bank means a person whose name is entered in the register, maintained under section 69, or who continues to be a registered bank by virtue of the provisions of section 76. Okay, we're going to look at section 69 in the next slide, but let's just first have a look up here, because we've got a body corporate, a body of persons, whether incorporated or not, which a body of persons, when they're incorporated, is a body corporate. So, out of Butterworth's Law Dictionary, body corporate, an association of persons regarded in law as a single person. Okay, we don't need to read any further because that's telling us there the joinder between the living man and the trust that's set up for our benefit. So, let's now go to um, section 69 of the um, Reserve Bank Act. The bank must keep a public register of persons known as registered banks. The bank must determine the form of the register and may amend the form from time to time as it considers necessary. The bank must take all reasonable steps to ensure that the information contained in the public register is available to members of the public at all reasonable times. Now I want you to take note of this because the Reserve Bank must keep a public register of persons known as registered banks. And what I can tell you is that every one of us is a registered bank. We, uh, we may all be in um, statutory management, but every one of us is a registered bank. And I'm going to show you how and why this comes about. So we're going to have a look at another document here now, the Code of Banking Practice. Now, if you've seen any of my earlier videos, you'll know that uh, I was using the fourth edition before. Now we've got the latest one, which is the fifth edition, 2012. And uh, we're going to see what it has to say about banks. So, from the very first page of this book, we will take a closer look at section 11B. Right there it is. In this code, we... Our or us means your bank. You or your means you, the customer. Okay, so the code, this is coding, and if you read the code, it says, when we address ourselves in this manner, we, our or us, it means your bank. Now, if you, if you go back and have a look at the uh, uh, Magna Carta, it was we, the people. If you go to the American Constitution, it's we at the people. The Queen will always say we, our, or us. So let's look a little bit further because now we have very, uh, very clear evidence that we are the bank if we use the right words. And throughout all of my presentations, the emphasis has been on finding out what the legal definition or meaning of a word is and then what and that is what is going to set us free now unless you check out every word you're going to um, you're going to come to grief so this is why I check every word to find out what it means because it's very very different when you go through the legal books um, and and read what the words are legally and as fate would have it someone that I just helped recently has provided us with a copy of his loan agreement so we're going to have a look at this now and see how the relationship is formed and the terms that we agree to. Okay, so up the top here, we're, we're looking TEA Custodians Pacific Limited, in its capacity as trustee, agrees to make a loan available to you on the terms set out in this, this loan agreement, including the attached account schedule, and the additional terms and conditions contained in the document titled Terms and Conditions, Release 4.0, Enclosed Terms and Conditions. Now, it's got some special expressions used here. 
Some words and expressions used in this loan agreement have special meanings. Those special meanings are defined in Clause 1 of the Terms and Conditions. When a word or expression is used with a special meaning, except you and we, it begins with a capital letter. So what they're telling us here is that they have got words that have special meanings, but they all begin with a capital letter. But for some reason, you and we are not with capital letters. So let's look a bit deeper. Right at the top there, TEO Custodians Pacific Limited and its capacity as trustee, they have now shown that they are acting as trustee of our trust. And here, they, have, they address us as you, so they have made us the customer by addressing us as you. So in the very first sentence there, they have um, set up the relationship between us and them, and they have made themselves the trustee and made us the customer, going back to page 1.1 one, uh, 1 .1 of that um, uh, banking code. They've made us the customer, and the customer must always pay. Now, this sentence here, shows us the power of the words you and we. So what it's telling us is that whenever we use those words, if we capitalize them, they have a different meaning. If we, if we put them in lowercase, then they have the correct meaning. So be very careful how you word your documents, that you don't use uh, capital for we, us, and our, and you. Okay. Now that we've seen the sleight of hand that goes on once the bank has offered us a loan but switched us to the customer, the loan agreement serves two purposes. They need to first make us the customer and secondly, they need us to provide them with a power of attorney or appoint them as trustee. They've done that in that document. So straight away, we become subservient to them and then they, once they have the power of attorney, they may act on our behalf. That's a bit of a problem, isn't it? So once they act on our behalf, they then apply to the internal affairs for our printout. Now, I cannot stress about uh, the printout enough, or in America, the um, birth certificate. It is a security, and this is the bond that goes out on the bond markets to trade. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. But what happens next is your lawyer will give you a call and ask you to sign the mortgage agreement. The mortgage agreement is a separate agreement, and although it is written on the bank's letterhead, you will notice that it's not the exact same letterhead as the documents that you receive from the bank. Now, the second level or the second tier lenders do not, um, they do the loan and the mortgage agreement all in one. Okay, but the, but the major banks they they come in acting as our attorney um, give us the loan because they've switched themselves to the bank and made us the customer and then they get the lawyer to do the dirty work of signing up the death grip the mortgage okay so now that you know that and right now we're going to come back to um, to the printout. Now, as I've explained in previous videos, our printout is the security that gets traded. In America, it is either the long or short form birth certificate. I'm not sure because I don't live there and I haven't seen them. But in Australia and England, it is the extract. Okay, this is um, when you're applying for your extract. Um, I pulled this off the Queensland um, website. Um, so that's the application to get an extract. Um, I haven't looked up the English one, and if you're watching this in America, um, I think there's probably enough online for you to go and get yours. But I just want to explain to you a little bit about when you get your extract or your birth certificate or your printout, what this document actually does. This is what goes out onto the bond markets. Now, if ever you've been called uh, into the courts, and um, you make your first appearance, they ask you for a plea, guilty or not guilty. 
whatever your plea is, you will come back in 90 days. Because what they do then is they apply for a printout and they put that out onto the uh, onto the market as a 90-day bond and they're going to be trading in the hope or they're going to be gambling by putting that out onto the bond market in the hope that they're going to make money on it or that you're going to lose and you're going to be paying them. So that's what these bonds are all about. Now once you know this, um, there is some good stuff as well, I can assure you, which we may get to a bit later. So we need to look at two acts to understand the security, and that's the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Act, 1989, interpretation. In this act, unless the context otherwise requires, security has the same meaning as in Section 2 of the Securities Act. Oh, okay, so we'll go to, we'll go to that act, the Securities Act. In this act, unless the context otherwise requires, security has the meaning set out in Section 2. They don't want you to find this in a hurry, do they, by the look of it? But anyway, here's 2D now. Meaning of security. In this act, unless the context otherwise requires, the term security means any interest or right to participate in capital, assets, earnings, royalties, or other property of any person. Now, I just explained to you what they're doing when they, when they get that security, print, which is the printout or the birth certificate or the uh, uh, extract. They get that security and they are allowed to participate in how that bond goes out onto the market. They can then actually um, get money off it. So it includes an equity security. Now we're going to look at equity security and a debt security. We're going to look at that also. We're not too much worried about the rest there, but we will look at those two. Where the terms of security require or allow the subscriber to pay separate amounts of money at different times, each such payment shall, for the purpose of this act, be treated as payment for the same security as each other payment. Yeah, not too sure that that helps us a lot, but... Um, it's, it's there anyway for you to read. Okay, so now I said we'd look at debt security first. Now, as I said before, a debt, that which is owed. Okay, now it could be that they owe us money. It could be that we owe them money, but I think it's the former. So debt security means any interest in or right to be paid money that is or is to be deposited with, lent to or otherwise owing by any person and includes a debenture, debenture stock, bond, note, certificate of deposit, and convertible note. An interest or right that is declared by regulations to be a debt security for the purposes of this Act, and a renewal or variation of terms of conditions or any such interest or right or security referred to in paragraph A or paragraph B, but does not include an interest in a contributory mortgage, where the interest is offered by a contributory mortgage broker, or any such interest or right of security referred to in paragraph A or paragraph C, that is declared by regulations not to be a debt security for the purposes of this Act. Okay, well, in the first bit there, they're telling us that a debt security means any interest or right to be paid money on a debenture, debenture stock, or bond, note, certificate, or all that. Okay, so they want to put themselves into that position where they're getting the money. But think about the reverse situation, because it also applies to us. Okay, number two, once again, this, uh, this is from the um, Securities Act. The equity security means any interest or in or right to a share in or the share capital of a company and includes. So that's not really applicable to us. But a debt security certainly is. Okay. Now I want you to really take this in. The Reserve Bank Act 1989. Securities Registry Services. The bank may provide securities registry services for any person, including services in connection with the issue, registration, exchange, transfer, or replacement of securities. Okay, so once you get your security from the Department of Internal Affairs, or whatever it is in your country, 
you may find that your reserve bank does offer the same things. They may provide securities registry services for the issue, registration, exchange, transfer or replacement of securities. Now you are the bearer of a security, you are holding it in your hand and under our legislation uh, each one of those securities is worth $10 million without further appropriation than the Act. Okay, so B, the calling and acceptance of tenders for securities. Okay, now uh, I know that every Monday in New Zealand they call a tender for, uh, for securities or 90-day bills. And those are, like I told you, the, um, uh, the courts and all the other people that are raiding your trust account um, without you knowing it. And um, they uh, issue these 90-day bonds and so the bank calls the tenders for them. C, the making or receiving a payment in respect of any security. You may want to look at that very carefully. Receiving payment in respect of any security. Securities registry services may be provided for such remuneration and on such terms and conditions as may be agreed by the bank. Who's the In, in this act, the bank is actually the reserve bank and the person for whom they are provided. So don't be confused, in, in this act, the bank is not us, you, uh, we, us or our, the bank that they're referring to in the Reserve Bank Act is the Reserve Bank. Okay, but security registry services may be provided for such remuneration. I'm trying to stress here in cloaked um, expressions what I'm trying to convey. Now that we know what document the bank is using as a security, we are way better informed to ask the right questions in relation to mortgagee sales. Now this should help you immensely because the information um, provided here should put to bed the question that most people have asked in the past which was show me the original note with wet ink signature. Now you know that that first the loan agreement was only for two things it was to make us the customer it was to make us you and it was to make them either trustee or giving them a power of attorney so we don't we're not concerned about that document what we're going to be asking them is about the security that they have which is our security our printout so I hope this uh, helps you on your journey and uh, with a bit more study, you may become free.